Hey everyone, it's Flagfire. Cosmetics in Battlefield 5 can be a huge point of contention for Battlefield 5 players. Many have been disappointed by a lack of historically accurate uniform choices, while others simply don't find them compelling, given how little of them you actually see on your character in game. Now, DICE probably appeased some of the fans of historical gear with recent offerings, but there remains a huge storm brewing on the horizon for DICE, namely, how will devs handle cosmetics with the addition of the Pacific Theater and the all but confirmed journey to the Eastern Front? Currently, DICE breaks down cosmetics into two key factions, Axis and Allied. This may have been cobbled together for launch, but it's not going to work in the future. If devs stick to this system for the Pacific Theater and beyond, it's going to infuriate a lot of players, and if they change it, well, it's still going to annoy a lot of people, so it's pretty much lose-lose. If this sounds a bit confusing, let me explain. If things continue without changes, players will be able to select German outfits for fighting in battles like Iwo Jima. This would be woefully inaccurate from a historical standpoint and would further wreck immersion for a group of players largely already shrugging off some pretty controversial developer decisions. And this would also be problematic for the Allies. The Battle of Iwo Jima was fought entirely by American forces, nearly all of them U.S. Marines or Naval servicemen. Letting players use British cosmetics here would make little sense, especially since Iwo Jima is hollowed ground for Marines. It's a recipe for a PR disaster, and we're already seeing some pushback from players with the introduction of American cosmetics on maps where they weren't historically present. So, what can devs actually do? Unfortunately, the answer to this problem isn't a simple one, and there are a couple of options. First, DICE could completely overhaul cosmetics and introduce a proper faction system. This could be done along historical lines, limiting the United Kingdom and German cosmetics to the European and North African theaters. DICE could then construct American and Japanese factions for the Pacific and keep them exclusive to those maps. Similarly, for the Eastern Front, the devs could build the Red Army as its own faction. If they don't take this approach, we'll see Americans fighting someplace like Stalingrad or the Japanese fighting on Arras. Such a move would shred any already tenuous claims to the game being historical. Call of Duty World War II faced similar criticism for allowing unfiltered cosmetics. New factions would mean several new tabs in the My Company section of Battlefield 5. One for the UK, Germany, America, Japan, and eventually the Soviet Union. That is a lot of organization to keep up with, and it may be a bit of a barrier to the casual player. Each of these faction appearances would need to be bound to appropriate maps. And on a side note, I would love to see the option to customize camouflage presets down to individual maps for maximum tactical advantage. However, creating new factions has its own problems. By limiting cosmetics, you're not only diminishing the value of the product you're presenting to players, you're also controlling their freedom of expression. It's difficult for players to justify purchasing an item if they're only able to use it, say, half the time. Even worse, this could be construed as a new and greedy way EA manipulates demand for new cosmetics, creating a world in which your previous purchases don't apply. While it still makes no sense for a soldier to be running around on Wake Island or something in a Stahlhelm, someone's inevitably going to claim you can't because the publisher wants more money. This approach could also strand some cosmetics. Given the lack of the actual battles featuring Americans in Battlefield 5, kits like the Wild Eagle would have nowhere to go, and that's simply not an option after their introduction for Boynes. If DICE goes the new faction route, I'd expect devs to fold them into the UK category unless they suddenly create several European or North African maps based on American involvement. Similarly, the new factions approach places a lot of pressure on DICE to generate enough cosmetics and vehicles to fill these new factions. That means common, uncommon, rare, and epic sets, as well as light tanks, medium tanks, heavy tanks, fighters, bombers, etc. Now, I'm no developer, but I'm smart enough to know that that stuff takes a significant amount of time and resources, two things I don't feel DICE has a lot of right now. The alternative to this is naturally to stay the course. Keep the Allies and Axis dichotomy. 
and allow players to select whatever they want. Again, Call of Duty World War II went with this approach, and it was surprisingly problematic for me. I had difficulties melting into the setting and identifying enemies, and this actually hampered my enjoyment of the game. And based on what I've read from other players, I'm not alone in this. I would much rather see DICE learn from the shortcomings realized in Call of Duty World War II instead of repeating the same mistakes because there's precedence and convenience. DICE could temper this controversy by providing a long-requested historical accuracy option that replaces inappropriate outfits with gear suitable for the time frame and location. Such a move might also be seen as an olive branch by players alienated by the poor PR at launch, and may entice them to return to Battlefield 5 just in time for new content. However you look at the cosmetic issue in Battlefield 5, it's coming to a head, and that's happening soon. I'm very curious to see which route DICE will take with their approach in the future. Tell me in the comments what you think developers should do. Would you like to see a historical accuracy button? And how do you feel about the idea of new factions? Tell me down below. Make sure you sign up for the BattleBox giveaway if you haven't yet done so. There's about a week left on that, and the link is in the video description. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that stupid bell to get notified of all the upcoming Battlefield videos. As always, thanks for watching.